Hey guys, I have a Line 6 DL4 Mark II. In my last video, I said I had a pedal coming and I wanted to share with you guys, and this is it, the DL4 Mark II. So I've wanted one of the originals for a while, and they've been out for a very long time, since 1999. But then uh, they announced the DL4 Mark II, and I just had to have it. So as a disclaimer, I bought this with my own money, so my opinions are my own. I'm going to say a few things I don't like about it, but overall, just uh, as a quick spoiler, it's, it's great and it's definitely worth the money. So I'm not going to go over the looper functions, that's why I have a looper here. I don't much care for the looper all that much yet because I just don't understand it. Also, I don't think you can use a lot of the delay functions with the looper, I might be wrong on that. But if you want to know, I can make a second video just about the looper, but I don't think it'll be that interesting to the people that watch this channel. So the real th reason I wanted it are the awesome delay algorithms. So this shares a lot of the delay algorithms of the previous model, as well as some from the HX Stomp. I think this includes all of the delay algorithms from the HX Stomp, except for like the multi-tap. So yeah, it, it's a light version of that though. So just be aware you don't have all the functionality of what you do on the real HX Stomp, but what you do get is very nice. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and play a quick uh, loop into the looper here and then play it back and we'll go over some of the things I like. So yeah. I have some pauses in there and everything. So yeah, it's like we can get an idea of what the repeats die out like. So the first thing I had open in the opening video was uh, the Heliosphere, which is a delay with a reverb, but only on the repeats. And I actually have that saved to one of the um, presets. So to save a preset, it's super easy. You just hold down one of the stomps until the light around it blinks. So I think that is one of the most lovely sounding reverb algorithms, period. This controls the amount of reverb in the repeats. Let's turn up the mix a little. And this is modulation, so it's also modulated, so that's really cool. Now this has hidden reverbs as well, and I'll get to those in a bit, but in this case, you know, let's just get to them now. I'm going to add a reverb to something that already has reverbs so we can stack them. And since they're hidden reverbs, they're the best kind of reverbs. So to do that, you hold down the Alt button and then you control it, move the main selector to what you want. I have a cheat sheet here that I'll be using to go over some of this because I haven't memorized any of this. We'll go to Ganymede, which is one of my favorite reverbs from the HX Stomp, or the uh, Helix series. So I'll hold down Alt, and I'll move it to the Cosmos setting while holding Alt. Alright, so that's now Ganymede, and that's a modulated reverb, and I think it's modeled after the Boss RV2. Sorry, the RV5. I don't know why I said RV2. But yeah, so our alternate controls, you hold down this, and then feedback becomes your decay. All right, and then this becomes your mod. for the reverb. And this now becomes where it is in the signal path. So like this, it's delay into reverb. In the middle, it's parallel. And in the beginning, it's reverb into delay. So we'll just do my favorite, which is delay into reverb. And then you can control the mix of the reverb here. Okay, so that, that sounds beautiful. Those hidden reverbs are great. 
Um, my other favorite one is Particle Verb, and that's a line six, like, classic. And that is under, I believe, the Euclidean mode. Sure is. So it's just a very big ambient reverb that goes on forever. And it has crazy modulation. I mean, that's kind of unusable when you turn it up like that. It's got like three modes of modulation. It has normal, like, and then two really chaotic ones. So I'm going to reset this really quick so we don't have any reverb. And we'll go to Cosmos, which is an RE201 emulation, the Boss Space Echo. Actually, I should say Roland Space Echo because it's not a Boss product. But I like this one. It sounds very good for a tape echo. So we have uh, Head Select here. And we have Wow and Flutter here, so head select them, turn them all on. And the nice thing about when you change the delay time on this one, it does the proper thing where the motor speeds up and slows down like a real um, space echo. So I love that. Let's add some reverb to that. Let's add Ganymede, which funnily enough is the Cosmos setting in the reverb mode. And I think that's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna go back um, to my preset with no reverb. You can hear reverb there because I'm using Heliosphere again, which has reverb in it. But if I switch to like, a glitch, you won't hear any reverb now. And I love glitch. Glitch basically lets you have a whole bunch of like randomness to it. It's like a granular delay. It does pitch changing, reversing, and things like that. You have a lot more control on the HX Stomp and Helix series than you do here. You kind of have a one knob that does all of it, and then one knob that does pitch. But yeah, it's really fun. Especially with reverb, because this doesn't really create a stereo image, but with the reverb it does. So let's add it. So that's pretty cool. All right, resetting again. And we'll switch over to, um, let's see, what else do I really like in here? I haven't went over any of the legacy modes yet. Um, so this is a legacy mode where you can get to the old DL4 algorithms. From the pedal that was made back in 1999. So yeah. That's stereo, which is a really nice old school algorithm. Kind of like a ping pong, but not exactly. It's kind of like two independent delays that don't like really feed back into each other, but really nice. And let's see, that's reverse, but that's like a kill dry reverse. Again, in the legacy mode. But I'm not really here for the legacy stuff, even though some of it sounds really good. And if you want a gritty feel to something, it's got that going for it. So. Let's go back to modern. I'll go to the crisscross, which I really like. And crisscross has the cross amount here. And then delay time for the second. Again, gorgeous, lovely stereo image, even without reverb. Of course, we're going to add reverb to that. So let's add the uh, particle verb. So the particle verb has a very narrow center to it. it, it I don't think it has a stereo spread. So with something with a stereo spread, it kind of sounds really cool. It's kind of like you have the reverb in the center and then out on the edges, you have the crisscross. It's, it's very beautiful. Alright, 
let's go to Elephant Man, which um, I really like analog delays, and the Elephant Man is an EHX Deluxe Memory Man. And actually, let's turn off the reverb. So the Elephant Man, we have mod depth and chorus vibrato, like an actual memory man. The um, modulation on this is definitely in stereo, if you can hear that. So that's really cool. I think it's a really good emulation. I mean, it's very... It's very clean sounding, but it still sounds nice. And of course, it'll it'll feed back into itself into self oscillation. I'm not going to make it go into the squealing, but yeah. All right, and the other one I really like is the Adriatic. Um, I think that's how you say it. it it's an emulation of the uh, Boss DM2, but like super advanced. So, like it, it can do a huge amount of delay time and it has modulation, which the DM2 doesn't. So at least I think this version does. Yes, it does. On the um, HX Stomp and Helix series, you have an Adriatic delay that has either mod or no mod. They put the mod version here, which I'm super happy about. I think that's actually my favorite analog model on this. I think it's one of my favorite analog models on a digital pedal. I think that gives the um, Br uh, Brigadier from Strymon a run for its money. Just beautiful. And let's add a reverb to that to make it even better. We're gonna add Ganymede again. This seems to have the Octo Reverb, which is a um, shimmer, and it's not a bad one. Let's actually listen to that. Uh, octo, that would be, let me read here. It's on the pitch echo. Turn the intensity down a little. Oh, whoops, wrong control. There we go. There we go. I think that's kind of cool. The Octo algorithm is super old. It, they had a um, line six by they had a reverb pedal a long time ago. I don't remember when it was. I think it was uh, early 2000s, late 90s. Um, somebody can correct me on that, but I believe that had the Octo algorithm. So we're talking a pretty old shimmer. It's still really cool. I still like Ganymede. We're gonna go back to Ganymede. I just know where Ganymede is because I like it so much. You get that modulation up on it, it's just fantastic. All right, so, hmm, what should I do next? The, you, the Euclidean delay is really cool. It kind of like, um, it's hard for me to explain. I kind of grasp how it works. I think what you do is you set the amount of, like, repeats you want to do. Like, I want to do eight, and you pick a time, and then it's supposed to, like, evenly divide it amongst that. So if you pick an odd time, it's supposed to, like, divide it out to that. It sounds really cool. We'll listen to that. And that's still with the reverb running, so... I think so, we go step fill and rotate. So you can get some really cool patterns with that. I'm doing a very bad job of explaining it, but it's still cool. 
and that's still with the Ganymede reverb. Again, hidden reverb, best reverb. Okay, so it's a really lovely reverb, but there is one thing that I absolutely can't stand on it, and that's the pitch echo. It sounds very bad. It, it just doesn't track well polyphonically or anything. That sets the offset for sense, like if you want to do like some chorusing, and this is the rough interval. I don't think it tracks very well, in my opinion. It's a personal preference, I just don't like it. That, that should be 24 intervals, so two octaves. should be none and then you should be able to do sent to offset yeah you hear that detuning even as it's like a still chorus i don't think that sounds that great i'll turn off the reverb I just, I don't like it. I have a lot of other pitch echoes. Uh, the Raster 2, for example, the Raster version 2, and that's just lovely. Even the uh, Maris, the um, Hydra, tracks better than this does. I could be doing something wrong, but... I feel I had the same problem on the HX stomp. And the sad thing about that is the uh, pitch shifting in the glitch algorithm sounds good. So it's like they can do it. Here, the random pitch changes. Okay, there. They're fantastic there. So I'm not sure what's up with that. All right, so that's kind of like what I wanted to share with you guys about how I feel about some of the algorithms on there. I know it's becoming a very long video, but I'm just so excited about it. It's such an interesting pedal, especially for its price point. Um, I personally think it beats the DD200, not the DD500 because you have so much control over that thing but it's in near closest competitors, the DD200 from Boss. The problem with the DD200 right now is you just can't find it anywhere. It's like, they're not producing them easily, but DD500's in the same, I guess it's almost in the same price category if you really look and get a used one. But this is 299, it's a very good sounding delay. I'll just stop it really quick there. Yeah, so, I like it for the price point. It's a little pricey, but it's not as bad as some boutique offerings and it, it gives you so much. So I'm gonna go over my gripes. Um, I really hope that uh, Line 6 watches this video so I can go over some of the gripes. One of the first gripes is the Alt button here. I wish that, I don't know how you would do it. Maybe you can hold down tap and that or something and you could latch it. I wish there was some function to latch it into the reverb mode so I didn't have to hold it when I was choosing the reverbs, for instance. It's just annoying. It It's an okay feeling button, but it doesn't have a lot of positive like feel to it. It feels like it's a slider switch over a dome contact or like a tack switch under that. It's not like the best. It's okay. It feels okay enough, but yeah. So any way to go into an alternate mode, I'm not sure if this is, this is an RGB LED, I think. 
So they could make you be turn it amber because it turns white for sure. But they can maybe turn it amber if you're in the secondary functions to tell you're in secondary functions um, for the reverb. That'd be cool. So you can latch it. Um, past that, the pitch echo really needs some work. I don't think the pitch tracking is all that great. I think it, um, I don't know why it's so bad because in the glitch algorithm, it's, it's fantastic. The harmony is the same. It kind of has the same problem going for it. So yeah. Otherwise, the other algorithms are fantastic. The uh, tape algorithms are really great. The digital algorithms are really great. The analog algorithms are, I, I don't want to say that they're class leading, but they're, they're damn close. They're just so good. Um, you throw some reverb into that and it just sounds ethereal with the analog or the tape settings. And then you have cool things like the Euclidean delay and you have the heliosphere so you can um, have reverb on the feedback and then put that into another reverb. And this is the ambient tone box that you kind of want in a decent price point. This is the same price as something like the Polymoon. I would absolutely say this is more versatile than the Polymoon. The Polymoon does sound really good, but when we're talking price to price, this just does more. And definitely over the Strymon Dig any day. This would be a hard sell to trade out for a Polymoon because the Polymoon has a phaser and a flanger. But over a Dig, I'm sorry Strymon, but for the same price, you get something that's a multi-delay. So yeah, uh, for the price point, I think this is a really great pedal. Um, heck, not even for the price point. It's just a really good pedal in general. I definitely am happy I got it. I do believe that the HX Stomp and the Helix series, while way more expensive, offer more functionality with the delay, even though they're the same algorithms. You have a limited amount of control, so this is like the light version. But what they gave you is very usable. So if you want something simple to get going, I mean, it's not the simplest pedal, but for a multi-effect, it, it's pretty easy to use. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you're as excited as I am for all the delays coming out this year. It's just insane. And I hope you found this interesting because I really like this pedal. It's just, it's great.